Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host Mundane, and today we're going to be talking about Toys to Life. I was always kind of a unofficial fan of Toys to Life before the genre was even there. Um, I'd always imagined my Thundercats, Lego, or my Transformer, G.I. Joes, coming to life and me being able to like remote control them or something like that in a game or campaign setting that was appropriate to their cartoon and stuff like that. Um, and in a way, I got that by playing some of the early games, X-Men on the Genesis. And, um, and, and that was fine for a while. But then other companies started taking it a little bit closer to what I was imagining when I was a child. And that's where the Toys to Life genre actually basically just came to market. And to better understand it, we'll just explain exactly uh, what the Toys to Life uh, genre is. It's basically a plastic model toy action figure or not. Um, that is a physical representation of something in a video game. Now, I believe the first people to get into this was Activision in 2011 with Skylanders. I saw Skylanders and I saw Spyro and I knew exactly what it was. This was the Spyro universe with lots and lots of other playable characters. And I fell in love with him. And, uh, you know, my now wife, who was a girlfriend at the time, um, she bought it for me for Christmas. And, yes, I know. It's, oh, it's kind of childish. And, oh, it was this, this big scam of, like, selling me DLC, lots of DLC, or... Inflated prices. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, and oh, it's active. Yeah, I get that too. Um, but didn't keep me from enjoying it. I love Skyland. I played through the first Skylanders game. I played through Giants. I played through uh, Swap Force. And then it got a little bit out of hand for me. Um, I, I looked around and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of done. And you know, not not to say that the games are bad, they just... Uh, I had other things to concentrate on. And I kind of lost touch with Skyrim. Um, now, I know that there are many, many different kinds of toys uh, to life games out there. Lego Dimensions is one of them. I never really got into Lego Dimensions. I think it was uh, Warner, Warner Brothers did it in 2015. And it was kind of seen as, oh, this is just a Skylanders ripoff. And that's basically how the gaming community that was fans of Toys to Life saw almost every single competitor to Skylanders. Was just, oh, this is just another knockoff of Skylanders. But I never got into Dimensions. I never got to play it too much. Uh, I understand that there were like multiple ways that you could figure the, uh, the figures. So, but you had to earn that in the game and then you could change it around on the figure as well. But you got Legos with your Lego Dimension. So there was added value there. Um, I just never got into it. Another game I... Uh, that fits the genre, and I actually got into it, was Light Seekers. Uh, now, Light Seekers is actually a multifaceted game. There is a run-around dungeon-exploring style game, and then there is a card game that's associated with it. 
Light Seekers came out in 2017. It was mainly backed by Toys R Us, and then when Toys R Us went away, the Light Seekers figures basically went. And it was released in 2017 by PlayFusion. PlayFusion is a uh, mainly just a card company. Uh, they they don't really stick with anything in the Toys to Life anymore. I, I had a lot of fun with it. They released four figures. These are tall. These are big figures, and they're action. They're actual action figures. Their their parts move and stuff like that. But the collectible part of it was. The weapons that you could plug in. It's, you could level up the weapons properly. You could have a shield. You could have a two-handed weapon. You could run around with two one-handed weapons. So there's a lot of innovation there. And um, there were backpacks that you could have that would uh, give you flight and all sorts of other stuff. It was a lot of fun. And the toys talk, which was kind of cool. But Light Seekers was basically only on... Uh, tablet devices or phones and when Toys R Us went under in the US light seekers basically next up was uh, in 2014 Nintendo came out with Amiibo I'm not so sure I need to talk anymore about Amiibo it's out there um, I don't know it is toys to life it is a toy that unlocks something digitally in a game. Uh, but depending on the game, there are multiple different kinds of functions. It might be a costume. It might be a level. It might be whatever the programmers wanted to put in there. Uh, in 2013, Disney came out with their own, and it was Infinity. Infinity's not that bad. Uh, there are multiple versions of Infinity, which is can be confusing for some users. Uh, I myself actually have Infinity 3.0 because I saw it for $10 at Walmart and I like Star Wars. So picked it up um, and then you know, me and my granddaughter, we played for a little while and we played in the toy box for, for, for the most part. And she's a big Tinkerbell fan so I went out and my Bought Tinkerbell, and I run around as Anakin Skywalker and runs around as Tinkerbell. It's kind of amusing, but it's uh, you know, it, it's it's just a fun game. We don't really take it too seriously, but it's there, and I, for the most part, I think Disney's pretty much done with it. Now, the last game I'm going to talk about is basically just like the last Toys to Life game. I know of. And unfortunately, I think the genre is pretty much dead. The last game came out in 2018, published by Ubisoft. It was Starlink. And right now, as of this recording, you can walk into a Best Buy and pick up Starlink for $5. And yeah, I think it's worth it. I had a lot of fun playing it, but we preface that. I play the Switch version. I had a lot of fun playing the Switch version because you got to have a Star Fox story. Now, the Star Fox, like, for $5, even if you never play the game, or you only play without any of the additional toys, which are additional ships, additional pilots, additional weapons to go onto those ships, and then you can start combining things. You could put three wings per side, so a total of six wings on a ship, on the, and they're interchangeable. Yeah, so the wings are interchangeable. They have different stats, and the weapons are interchangeable, and they do different things. They're different powered, and they're, they have different firing rates, and they have different elements. Elements unlock various things in the game, just like elements unlock things in Skylanders. And, you know... I, I think it was worth it, especially, like, if you're a Star Fox fan, just pick up the game. It's $5 on the Switch. Um, and if you hate the game, guess what? You have a wonderful $5 version of an Air Wing that is really nice. Um, it has movable parts. You know, 
it's okay. it's a lot of fun. I mean, just having the model is a lot of fun. But the game is worth playing as well. But you know, it's this is just all the toys to life that I know about. I'm sure that there is some sort of obscure thing that I've missed. You know what? I can't know everything. But if I've missed an obscure Toys to Life uh, game, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to be able to explore this a little bit further uh, and just look into this genre that had a very, very short lifespan. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.